I'm just going to lay out some of the, the basic ideas. I was hoping to have some deployment videos all ready for you guys to watch, but it's been raining and I just got the stuff. So um, assuming that the rain holds off for a bit, um, right when we're done here, I'll make those, I'll make those outside deployment videos so you guys can see those today and, uh, and then and start working on stuff. So the general idea here is we're going to um, either today or tomorrow or, or so when, when you guys receive your um, materials, uh, you're gonna have to get. You have to assemble a few things, but the rest you guys uh, will um, uh, be, should be ready to go. You're gonna go out, deploy these things in your different zones, as as we've been discussing. And hey, Doctor, do you mind if uh, some of the students are asking if we can record? Would you mind if I oh I totally can record? Yeah, so I I hit record on my local desktop, but yeah, absolutely hit record, please do. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. And so. Uh, yeah. So, so also, I, I apologize, you guys. I've been. This I've, meeting is being recorded. Excellent. So I should also say, I should also say that, um, you know, I've been on sabbatical of late. So I, I know it's been a crazy semester and and last six months and and all that stuff. So I apologize. I haven't been around to help you guys out as much as I normally would be. But uh, I'm sleeping a lot. So you know, so there, there's pluses and minuses for uh, me being around or not being around. Um, but uh, but. Uh, as I think you guys know, uh, you have a fantastic instructor here, your chair, all your faculty are, are here if you guys have questions um, and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and I really do encourage you guys to make use of Brenton's uh, or anybody's Zoom office hours, email, whatever. Um, I've been talking to all of our faculty and, and they definitely are, um, are really down for you guys and there's there's they're putting a lot of effort obviously this class but all of our classes people are putting a lot of effort in and, and i'll just note that it's it's not like most um typical classes where we can sort of just do our discussion online particularly things like field methods it's a real it's a real challenge to renovate and, and redo all of our instruction so um you guys should be really uh, i hope you're really happy with um how your faculty and particularly Breton has, has been rolling with, with this craziness, but it, it's definitely been tough for you guys. I know, but it's also been tough for a lot of our faculty um, and staff too. So I hope you guys, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure you do appreciate that, but I just wanted to make sure that I, I voiced that. Okay. All right. Getting back to what we're uh, doing, uh, going to start doing today. So you guys are doing your backyard assessments, your backyard maps, your backyard, backyard zoning and figure out what's what. Um, and we're going to talk about one of the techniques that you can use and we will use in our backyards, but you can use these all over the place. So we've, so these techniques that we'll talk about, uh, I, and we have used in Eastern Turkey in wetlands in Northern California and grasslands in Southern California, all over the place. So the, they really are pretty robust technology. And as you're learning with your, um, you know, being able to make quadrats on the fly, et cetera. Um, the basic concept is the same, whether we have a, a formal, you know, rigid PVC quadrat or a quadrat made out of sticks or a quadrat made out of coat hangers or whatever. And the true value in these techniques is that they're robust enough such that we can adapt them to different needs and they're relatively cheap. Not everything should be cheap. Right now we're, we're struggling through the corona insanity and some of the incompetence of our, our federal government has not gotten us some of the high resolution PCR tests and things like that that we need. So there are obviously um, more sophisticated techniques that we sometimes need, but a lot of this basic uh, core ecological assessment doesn't need that necessarily more um, sophisticated, more expensive stuff. And indeed, the cheaper and the more flexible the techniques are, the more useful they are to people, and therefore the larger the data sets can be and the more robust that technique can be ultimately. So cheapness isn't just a factor because we don't have money. Cheapness is also a way to assure that, that everybody can partake of these particular methods.